So let's take a look at an algorithm for computing the eigenvector, the largest eigenvector of a matrix. It's called the eigenvalue power method. This is a numerical approach, so it's a way to numerically estimate the largest eigenvalue and eigenvector of a matrix. It works well when there's kind of a large disparity between the largest eigenvalue and the other eigenvalues. So in other words, if there's what we call a dominant eigenvalue. So first, let's work through kind of the details of the algorithm, just the mechanics of the steps you perform, and then we'll do an example or two of actually applying that algorithm to a specific matrix. What we're trying to do here is, you know, given some matrix A, we want to answer the question, what is the largest eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector of that eigenvalue? So here's the power method algorithm that we're going to use. The first step's easy. We just pick a guess. We don't know what the, you know, largest eigenvector is, so we're just going to pick a value, but we're going to make sure that the largest entry of that vector has magnitude of 1. So when we make our initial guess, there is some initial restriction, but in general we can pick just about anything we want. After we've made that guess, then we're going to do a for loop. We're going to do this iterative approach and these iterative calculations to hone in on the largest eigenvalue and eigenvector. Here's what we're going to do for each value of k. We're going to compute a matrix product that I call p. So p equals a x k. So a times x k is going to result in this vector p. From that vector, we're going to figure out which is the largest value in magnitude. So look at the vector p, pick whose ever magnitude is largest, and we're going to call that n sub k. So on the kth iteration of this for loop, we're going to have this scalar value nk. Then we're going to use that scalar value to normalize the product, and then this gives us our next guess for x. So if you notice, what happens is we started here with x of k, and by the end of this iteration of the algorithm, we have x of k plus 1. And then we can just complete this whole loop over and over and over as many times as we want. What's going to happen, and here's basically step 3, is you need to look at what's happening in that loop, and what should happen, as long as we've um, you know, made our initial guess appropriately under these constraints and there is a dominant eigenvalue, is that this sequence of scalars, these n k's, n 0, n 1, n 2, n 3, n 4, those should converge to lambda 1, the largest eigenvalue of the matrix. Similarly, these vectors here, these x k's, as k gets large, those should converge to the largest eigenvector well, not largest eigenvector, the vector that corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. So that is the algorithm. It's called the power method. Let's go ahead and use that algorithm for an example or two. And we'll start off simple. Let's just do a simple 2 by 2 matrix. Here's the matrix A. It has entries 7, 9, 9, 7. Obviously, we could just very easily compute what these eigenvalues are. If you do that, you figure out that the largest one is 16 and the smallest one is minus 2. So technically for this, such a simple matrix here, you don't even need this algorithm. But if you're working with a much larger matrix, maybe with 50 eigenvalues, maybe doing that in real time would be difficult. If you only need the largest one, this algorithm would let you figure that out very efficiently. All right, so here's step one. We need to make a guess for x0. So I'm just going to guess x0 is 1, 0. Remember, one of these entries has to have a magnitude of 1, and then the other entry can be anything that we want it to be. I'll just pick 0. So here we do. go. Let's just do our for loop now. So for k equals 0, I form the product ax0, and if you multiply that out, you get 7, 9. Looking at this vector right here, I pick out the largest magnitude entry, which is obviously 9. I call that n0. And then I normalize to get my next guess for x1. So after I divide this vector by the value 9, I get 0.77 and 1. Now I go to the next iteration, k equals 1. I form the product ax1. If you multiply that out, you get this vector right here. The largest magnitude entry is 14.39, which tells me that my next guess for x is 1.97. Go to the next iteration, k equals 2. So I need to form the matrix product ax2. So if I take a times x2, I get the vector 15.73, 15.79. Again, find the largest magnitude entry and do some normalization. So that's what we call n2 to get my next guess for x3. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Look at this sequence. It was 9, 14.39. 
15.79. The amount that that's changing is kind of slowing down. I wonder what's going to happen here on this next iteration for k equals 3. Form the matrix product, ax3, and we get this. We get our normalization constant. Now it's 15.972, and that gives us an x4 of 1.99. So you can kind of see what's happening here. The, the amount we change between here and here has definitely slowed down quite a bit. And in fact, let's look what's happening. This is converging to 16, just as we know that it had to. I went ahead and fixed my uh, subscript right here. That was just N before, should have been N3. Sorry about that. So yeah, so this sequence of Ns is converging to 16, just like it's supposed to. Let's, so let's go ahead and draw our conclusion. The sequence of Ns, as it, at K is getting large, is going to 16, which is indeed the largest eigenvalue. And look what's happening to X. The entries of X are getting closer and closer to 1, 1. So it looks like the largest or the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue is the vector 1, 1. All right, let's do another example. We're going to work with the exact same matrix. Well, why is that interesting? Well, what's interesting is we're going to do the algorithm on the exact same matrix, but we're going to start with a completely different guess for x0, and it will still converge. That'll give us some kind of confidence that this initial guess really doesn't matter. All that really matters is you have a dominant eigenvalue in the matrix. So let's go through the same algorithm. I'll go through this a little bit quicker because I think you've seen the pattern. Form the product, find the largest magnitude entry, do the normalization, and then go to the next iteration. Form the product, find the largest magnitude entry, which would be 12.15, normalize P by that to get the vector, go to the next iteration, this should be K equals 2 now, we form the product AX2, here is the vector we get, which has largest magnitude entry 15.363, we do the normalization, you can see very similar things are happening here, the sequence is different, but we went from 5.5 to 12.15 to 13.36. We're honing in on 16. Let's see what happens here for k equals 3. We form the product. We find the largest entry. Wow, getting much closer to 16, 15.916. And here is our vector. So again, we can draw the same conclusion. As k gets large, it looks like n is tending to 16, which it should which is the largest eigenvalue. And it looks like the vector x is converging to minus one minus one, which is the corresponding eigenvector to this largest eigenvalue. Now you might be a little worried, on the last slide, we were converging to one one. Here I say we're converging to minus one one. So as I changed my guess here on this example, it looks like we're getting a different answer, but we're really not. If you think about the vector 1, 1 and the line that that makes in the 2D plane, the line minus 1, minus 1 is along that same direction. So 1, 1 and minus 1, minus 1 are still the exact same line in the plane. So these still have the same direction to them. So don't worry about that. All right, so that wraps up this little video. It was just a demonstration of the power method for computing the largest eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector of a matrix. It works really well if you have a dominant eigenvalue. If an eigenvalue is not as dominant, what ends up happening is you have to go further and further with K before it to converge. So it definitely works better when there is a dominant eigenvalue. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.